Hello, Mark Crossfield here. We've run back indoors. It's minus six outside. Minus six. What good is that to anyone? Who needs minus six? It's ridiculously cold. So we're indoors. We've got the Golf Swing Weekly Fix. Loads to do. We're going to do lots of quick fixes this week. Uh, so running through a few swings, having a lot for sent through the apps, which is great. Going to try and get through as many as possible. Question of the week. Golf talk. Loads to do. As usual, get in the hole. Slightly left. Let's get stuck in. So here we go with some quick fixes. You can see from the swing, classic over the top. See this one week in, week out. You take the club back, the shaft's just over the ball. So if I was to carry the line down, it just shoots over the ball. Then as you start down, the club starts to point inside of the ball line. So the classic shaft plane coming down steeper than the hand plane issue that I've talked about in other lessons. Two drills for you to practice then. One is the simple thinking about the beam of light shooting out the end of the club, top of your backswing, normal backswing, downswing, try and feel like you point the club over the ball. So do that, point the club over the ball, and then just swing out to it. It's hard to hit the ball that way, but it will give you the feeling of swinging from the right direction. Um, so it's literally about trying to get that shaft to drop down lower than the hand plane, feel like you're pointing the butt end out and then throwing it out to the ball. Another great tip, which I have good success with this one, it changes club path instantly. It does affect angle of attack a little bit. So you might need to go and book yourself into a lesson to deal with that issue. But this might help you feel the club path a little better. Make your normal backswing. It's a normal amount of stretch, like you're doing. But from the top, keep your feet grounded on the floor. Don't try and use your hip. Don't try and rotate your hips. Don't try and use them. Just from the top of the backswing, feel like you're pulling down with your hands only and throw the club beyond your body. So feel like the club just throws beyond your body. Don't let your body rotate, let your body stay where it is, as you're feeling, and then throw the club beyond your body. What happens when we do this for people? It often feels very weird to them. Nice big draw on that one. Um, but it completely moves their club path straight away, and it gives them the feel of trying to drop the club, and then let the club move ahead of their body before turning through. From your swing, we do see quite a lot of rotation with the hip, which is very good for bringing in the club that little bit steep on the way down or across the line at the bottom. Hope that helps. So we see this one a lot. Quite a young, powerful swinger. Not much stabilizing in the lower half, left leg, knee, hips as he comes into impact, then starts getting in a right mess for impact with his arms. I want you to get the feeling of throwing that club beyond your body. So your body stays back with the ball, as your arms throw beyond. What this will do is it will help you try and stay connected with the floor and stabilise with your body as you come through the ball to help make a more precise strike. The other thing, by trying to get the club head to overtake your hands a little bit, it's to go beyond your hands and your body at the bottom, is allow this natural release rather than this kind of guided follow through that we see. And the best way to do this is the one foot drill. So just one foot opposite the ball, right foot back, all weight on the one foot, normal stretch on the way back, and then try and hit the ball as hard as you can with your arm swing without falling over. Letting that club pass in front of your body. It will allow you to get the feeling of hitting with some stability. So more of a planted feeling as you hit the ball rather than this left foot raising up that we see in the knee collapsing. And it'll get the feeling of the club stretching across your body, which gives it that more on the 2D camera image, this kind of look at this release like it's turned over. It hasn't, but it just will look more that way rather than the chicken wing that we see. Hope that helps. So, question from Andy Godfather Phillips. Good name. Here's a question for you. Watching Doral, the scores drop due to the wind picking up. So, how much does the wind actually affect the pros if they are striking it pure each time? Great question. Look, the wind affects everyone. Um, good players, two amateurs. The pros don't strike it pure every time. So, when they miss strike a shot in a heavy wind, say a crosswind, that ball will tend to move more or less than they're expecting, which is always going to make it harder. Um, the other thing is there's that element of nature which has just been heightened when the wind blows more. So if I'm playing this hole and I need to start it right at this bunker to allow the wind to bring it back, you know, there's that element as I hit the ball, I hope the wind sustains its pressure or it's, it's 
it gusts so or doesn't gust too high or drops so I leave it out there or overturn it. So there's always those few more variables but the most important thing in the wind is that you are very much in control of your ball and you're able to move it around a bit high, low, left and right, those kind of things which you'll see the pros being able to do, they're very skilled at. But even with the wind or no wind what you'll find the people winning most of the tournaments are often the people who are striking the ball the best for that week and then maybe converting their chances more than the next guy. So the wind affects everyone from top tour pros through to uh, handicap golfers. I think where you really see this at its most is in the British Open. If you watch the British Open, when the wind gets going, you know, the scores are not under par often on these fantastic links courses where the wind is really the biggest defence. That's what those courses were built around. So the wind has a massive effect on all golfers, amateurs and pros, and definitely it's another heightened thing uh, from nature, another permeable they've got to build into their shots, which makes it just a little bit harder than it already is. Thanks for posting. Good question. So we see here the spine angle, um, classic trying to retain your spine angle swing. So what I mean by that, let's pretend I lean forwards here with my back or upper body, say 40 degrees. Okay, and then as I make my back swing, I turn, but try and keep this bend at 40 degrees. What happens is I start making these kind of movements. Because what happens in the golf swing is you bend your back forwards or upper body forwards, and as you make your back swing, that gets replaced with side bend, and you take the bend, so this being bend, forward bend as I rotate I'm still forward bent this way comes out and the same on the follow through I don't make a rotation on the follow through and bend forwards I actually start bending the other way into a reverse sp spine angle my spine starts going back the other way so for you we see the classic follow through spine angle spine angle I mean it's just there's no power I can't hit a shot like that it's such an awkward way to hit a ball so you've got to get a bit of a feeling of making a backswing. Backswing is a bit closer, but the follow through, you've got to try and get your pelvis to slide out from underneath you as you rotate through. You don't want your spine so bent forward with a bit of side bend in at the, at the end. You need to get the feeling of your hips sliding forwards as they rotate, almost as if you're cutting half or you just cut this section out of your body and it slid out from underneath you as you make your downswing to try and get some extension in this lower back as you come through get yourself hitting slightly more solid strikes and hopefully some better shots let me know how you go so guys golf talk today we're going to talk a little bit about visualizing your shots this is something that all good players will do um, they have the right to visualize their shots because they are confident they're going to pull the shot off where maybe lots of amateurs don't think about visualizing shots because they don't even know where it's going to go to start. But look, everyone who comes to lessons for me has a shape of shot. They have a pattern of shots within reason. Most players playing the game, certainly on a course with any level of handicap, high, low, medium, whatever, will have a shape shot, a pattern of shots. They might be trying to change it, but they'll have a repeatable group of shots. So look, let's just talk a little bit about uh, visualizing the shots. Now for me, let's pretend I'm going to start by trying to hit a draw into this par 3. So what I would do is I would choose my club, which hopefully you're doing, and then I would start looking down the ball line and seeing what I want to do with this shot. Now I'm going to try and start this one kind of right portion of the green and then draw it back into the flag. So before I go into the deal, I've got this preconception of what shot I want to hit. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't mean I'm going to pull it off, but it's going to give me a better chance to pull it off if I know what I'm trying to pull off. So here we go, let's give this one a start and see if I can actually pull it off. Okay, it's coming back, maybe not quite enough draw as much as I would want, but it got the bit of shape. It, so I can tell that that shot is a good or bad shot, subject to my preconceptions, my visualization before going in. So look, if I just turn the light off here, and I'll show you the shot I hit. So hopefully you can see that. I would have wanted a little bit more turn than that, back towards the flag. Um, but it's got the shape, so it's very close to what I imagined before going in. 
Let's just turn this light back on. So we're going to do another one now. So I'm going to see this shot a different way. I'm going to visualize it now left to right. So I'm going to start it left, kind of this portion of the green, middle-ish to left side of the green, try and cut it back towards that flag. Again, might not pull it off, but I'm trying to achieve something before going in. A real definite idea of the shot I want to pull off. Subject around what I feel I can pull off. I feel I can do both ways, so draw and fade. So I feel like I've got every right to try this one. Let's give it a go. Little bit too much cut, just drifting it onto the right side. Didn't start it enough down the left. But on the green. So again, if I just turn this light off, just lets you see the screen a little better. There's the face. It didn't start it enough left. I wanted to start it more left side of the green. You can see I started almost at the flag and then cut it away. I got the shape shot I was after, just didn't quite get the desired starting position. So the, 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 visual, the visualization is allowing me to improve as a golfer because I've got these preconceptions of the shot I want to hit before going in and then I'm rating each shot on that preconception. And if I'm 20 over or 20 under, I'm still going to have that visualization before going into the shot, before going into the deal. Um, and that's the biggest difference. So many amateurs I see, I mean, loads come for lessons and I say, which direction are you hitting the ball? Where's your bad shot? And they say, oh, I hit it everywhere. Okay, show me some shots. They hit some and they don't. They're just cutting everything or even hooking everything. They have a pattern. They're just not seeing that pattern and they're not seeing that pattern because a, they're not maybe watching close enough. B, their strike is a little random, so they do get a little bit of variance in their shots, but when they hit one out in the middle, there's a pattern to their shot. Uh, or C, they haven't got that preconception of what they're trying to achieve before, and then referencing how far off or on that shape of shot they are from the preconception at the start. So going into each shot, when you play this weekend or next time you're out there, guys, visualization you've got to see the shot see what shot you're going to try and hit before you hit it and then rate yourself on how much or how good or bad you achieve that shot and even make a note of it on your phone on a bit of paper wherever watch your practice sessions visualize the shot before going in how many do you achieve how many do you don't take that data to your coach and get working on some improvements where you see the holes thanks for watching guys so we've got a massive shoulder turn on the way back. So shoulder turns probably going up near 100 degrees on the backswing and an impact varies stuck with the shoulders. They just can't make that ground back up. Need to get you trying to make a couple of swings where you feel like your shoulders turn a lot less to you. So if you're turning your shoulders 100 degrees, they need to turn 20 degrees less than that. You want to get your shoulder turn around 80 degrees. Think about where 80 degrees is. So if I'm standing hitting on a shot uh, or hitting a shot of this target here, 90 degrees is turning that way. So it's a right angle to my ball, the target line or my feet line. So for me to turn my shoulders and all my upper body 90 degrees, I mean, it's a long, long way for me. You're going through that probably up to 100. So 80 degrees is short of that ball. My shoulders, my left shoulder would stop short of that ball. And that often for people, even though it makes the backswing feel very short, it's often the best fort for them to use. When I'm teaching people with this one, I literally say, try and feel that your left shoulder points down in front of the ball. So as I make my backswing here, I stop my backswing where I feel my left shoulder is pointing just down in front of the ball. Now to me, that doesn't feel that bad, but to you, you're gonna find that feels probably very, very short and quite unnatural because you're much more used to trying to go full stretch on the way back so full full stretch you literally then can't stretch anymore so it's a pull down with the club and the bit where the shoulders start undoing and unfortunately not enough and you get a bit stuck at impact and you can't get through it got to get control of that shoulder turn so many people think they should get to full stretch at the top of the backswing it's so not true you've got to take some stretch a bit more stretch on the downswing and then fire that stretch in at the ball is the idea for you get your shoulder turn turning less than 190 degrees so you're going through 90 degrees 90 degrees would be there so less than there would be left shoulder pointing more down to the ball and in front of the ball not beyond it subject to your ball position hope that helps thanks for sending this swing so a bit of a beginner's lesson to finish here we see this swing i get this a lot with new golfers get it a lot with young golfers as well people feel they need to step about to try and create some momentum with the club 
Um, and sometimes it can create a bit of momentum. The actual shot you seem to hit in the video looks like quite a good shot considering how much you're jumping about. But you want to try and get more rooted with the ground, try and get your body feeling the mat, feeling the ground a lot more, and try and get the club swinging through the ball, try and get the club swinging at the ball with a much more controlled movement in your body. Best way for you to do this, simply for beginners, just try and get your hands over your right shoulder, over your left shoulder on the way through, while keeping your feet flat on the floor. That's a good way to start. Just get the feeling of your body rooted to the ground, arm swing a little bit more aggressive possibly than you're used to, and a bit more stretch, over right shoulder, over left, and then your last movement, two like that, a little bit more, same kind of movements with your answering, a little bit more movement with your body, still connected on the way back. And just finishing, trying to show the back of your foot here to the camera behind me or to the back wall if you're on a range or what have you. Get a lot more feeling to that club moving and your feet and hips staying a lot more calmer and more connection with the ground. Get out of these kind of stepping actions. Such a classic beginner uh, fault, that one. Hope that helps. Thanks for sending everyone and uh, we we'll look forward to speaking to you soon. What's going on here? Don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel. Also, thumbs up the video, post comments. Love to hear what you guys got to say. Let's keep it social. The more we talk, the more we share, the easier this game will get for, uh, for everybody. So if you want to find me on Facebook here, you can find me on Facebook. If you want to tweet me, find me on Twitter here as well. Just follow the links all in the description. Come and join the show. Get active, get involved, get playing some better golf. Thanks for watching.